Welcome back to the Paranorm Girl podcast. I am your host, Kristen. Today we pick up the conversation with Jim Brown right where we left off, talking about video captures of Sasquatch. I ask him about what he looks for in the footage to validate or debunk before we jump into signs and evidence that we might find out in the woods. Support for the Paranorm Girl podcast is brought to you by Manscaped. 2024 is here in full swing, and that means it's time for another New Year's resolution check-in with our friends at Manscaped. It's never too late for the man in your life to level up his grooming game. Manscaped's new Lawnmower 5.0 Ultra is every man's cheat code to look good, feel good, and turn the page on confidence this year. Whether he's going for a trim or that clean-shaven look, this trimmer has him covered. Trusted by over 10 million men worldwide, now is his time to get a grip on his grooming with my exclusive offer. Go to manscaped.com and use code PNG for 20% off, plus free shipping. The ball has dropped, but don't let him drop the ball on his balls. Resolutions might come and go, but a well-groomed man is here to stay, ladies, thanks to Manscaped. And thanks to you. Sometimes a fella may not realize he's looking a little like man squatch down there. Okay? This is the time to lend a helping hand. Introduce him to the Lawnmower 5.0 Ultra, and you have just introduced him to his new grooming sidekick. He can take it in the shower with him. He's got his choice of trim with the interchangeable skin safe blade heads. He can get into nooks and crannies he never knew existed with its dual LED spotlight. Banish the man squatch and get 20% off and free shipping with the code PNG at manscaped.com. All right, let's jump back in. Please enjoy the second half of my conversation with Jim Brown. I think the Freeman film is a good one. It's the same kind of thing. He had seen footprints and comes back the next day looking and he finds some really fresh ones. And you can he hear something and you can hear hear it coming through the woods and then he sees it and it kind of, it seems to maybe go pick up a baby. That seems to happen a lot of times. I can think of three instances. But he, he, he sees it going through the woods. Uh, and it's not bad. Uh, there's the Memorial Day footage, which is where people photo, uh, videoed this large creature running down a hillside there in Oregon or Washington, mm -hmm. uh, one of the northwest states. And um, they tried recreating that, like with a trail runner, you know, and couldn't do it, um, as, as I have read. And it seems to stop and pick up a baby behind a rock and then run off into the woods. So I'm thinking, you know, it's like, okay, here's mom. She, you know, she's waiting whether to get seen or take, make sure the baby's taken care of. Mm -hmm. And she decides that, you know, she'll let uh, risk exposure, but to keep the baby safe is sort of the way I see it. There's also one, uh, <laughs> the 4th of July footage where you see, um, this, um, something coming from behind a rock. And again, it seems to pick up a baby and, and, and then walk off. There's none of them that are perfect, but the, what you do see seems to jive with the Patterson Gimlin footage. And there's some others I've seen lately. I don't know whether to trust them or not, mm -hmm. um, you know, but look good. Uh, but I don't, I can't, I'll put a name to them or anything. The, uh, the lot of, a lot of those you can go to, um, MK Davis, uh, and Thinker Thunker, mm -hmm. who are, uh, guys who, uh, analyze these films and say, yeah, or yeah, that looks, you know, I can't prove it fake. And, and they're worth, they're worth going to. And they've got a lot of them. Yeah. Yeah. So, I, I would also throw in there just for my listeners, check out Sasquatch Syndicate. They do a little theater, like five to 10 minute uh, video review every week. That's, that's excellent. And they, they'll, oh, they'll rate it cool. too. Yeah. Oh, excellent. <laughs> throw that okay. in there since we're talking about it. Well, um, how, uh, if, if we are to properly be skeptical of these videos and decide for ourselves, like, okay, this is compelling enough. I think this is just as legit 
uh, if if not more, of course, of the PGF. Like, how should we should we be looking for certain things in the video? Do you look for certain things when you're looking at the videos? Uh, yeah, and I actually almost got taken in by one not long ago that was uh, here in Colorado, actually video that was taken from the train oh yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. and, and I, my first thought was that looks pretty good but then i started looking at it and it, it had long arms but the hands were floppy they seemed to be floppy mm. and when it sits down it's set just like a person yeah rather than something whose legs uh were entirely different construction and then as it turns out then um the guy who did it who uh, i've seen before at some of the conferences uh, he says, I did it. Um, oh, yeah. So, but I, I, I tend to look for proportions, you know, long arms, shorter legs, you know, knees bent, if you can see that, the movement. Uh, does it look too much like a person or is it, I mean, these, these things are huge. Mm -hmm. You know, they're big, they're bulky, uh, but they're incredibly fast and agile. Um, I kind of look at the settings sometimes. There, there's a, a great film of um, one waiting. Somebody sees it wading through a swamp. Now I'm thinking, okay, are you going to go wading through a swamp wearing big old fake feet and a helmet where you can't see, where you've got alligators and cotton mouths? You know, are you going to even risk doing that in the first place? You know. Or if something is trippingly going trippingly through the woods, you know, uh, it's probably not a person because you just can't run in those big old fake feet and a helmet. You couldn't run through rough terrain, anything more than a sidewalk and probably not even that, you know. I mean, I've never tried putting on a gorilla suit and running down a sidewalk and, <laughs> uh, you know, God willing, I never will. But... Um, you know, if they're running very agile, if they're very agile, they're in the woods, that's a good sign. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, sometimes, you know, even the best of times, just rocks and stuff in the ground and in the mountains and stuff, uh, it makes for slow walking. So those are some of the things I'll look for. The terrain, does it move like a person or like something else? And the proportions are always, those are the things I'll look for. Yeah, yeah. And then there's just... You know, there seems to be a thing, and I don't know if I'd call this definitive, but you see it a lot where they, they seem to walk and th they move from like touching one tree to the next, to the next. Uh, I've seen that in a lot of videos and I can't explain it unless there's just something about the groundedness of it. I don't know. But like, you know, when you get up in the middle of the night and you're staggering, and you're kind of walking and you're touching the door, you know, um, <laughs> Maybe you're not old enough to be <laughs> for that to be the case. But, uh, oh, I'm but, old uh, enough. <laughs> but uh, sometimes you see that, and and to me that just adds a little thing of a little touch of authenticity. Yeah, to it. yeah. So those are you know those are a few thoughts on that. I'm sure I'll have more eventually. But yeah, yeah. No, you know, guys, I, I, I am very wary when I'm approaching video evidence because I know that it's it's a very easy piece of evidence to hoax and especially mm -hmm. something and you know with with a, a forum like video or photo evidence like that kind mm -hmm. of stuff all you need is a good program man and a little mm -hmm. imagination and it can be very easy to hoax so I do get very wary with that kind of stuff but I like I appreciate you providing the things that you look for um, just to like keep that in mind as as I proceed through this season on the subject. Uh, <laughs> Don't and get people taken all, in. <laughs> and people always want to say CGI, CGI. Mm, yeah. Now that's getting easier, I guess, but it's still not easy to do. You know, it takes a, a studio or somebody, you know, with a lot of knowledge and a lot of stuff to actually create CGI. Yeah. Uh, like I say, it may be getting easier with, you know, as, as time goes on, but historically you know back when a lot of these were filmed you'd have to go to you know disney studios to do something like that you know? yeah 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 well and in, in in the instance of like the freeman footage 
uh, you know, even then, like it was, I, I think they were able to say like this, you know, n everything that is on this film, this happened in camera, like the, it shot what mm -hmm. it shot, like there was no mm -hmm. after effects, nothing like that. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, yeah. So and, and that one, too, like I find very intriguing. The uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I just went to a conference and heard his son uh, speak on it. And it was oh, uh, cool. Yeah, yeah. It was just really, really interesting. Um, well, thank you for all of that. Uh, let's let's shift gears here because I do want to give a little bit of time to talk specifically about Bigfoot evidence. Mm -hmm. So uh, let's start out like like what kind of uh, evidence would you generally like to see in a reportedly Sasquatch mm -hmm. area or or generally initially look for? I mean, there would be the you know the gold standard would be if somebody came across a corpse. <laughs> Oh, yeah. yeah. Uh, you know, that would be, you know, God willing, they would not create that corpse. I just think, you know, that would be murder. But um, if you can, you know, footprints are always, you know, very good. Uh, and there's hundreds of them. I mean, they, there are hundreds of footprints out there that have been cast. And some of them actually even show like a deformity, like it maybe the foot was caught in a trap or something. You know, it's called the cripple footprint. Mm -hmm. And uh, one, um, I think might, might have been Melcher, but somebody took that to a convention of um, podiatrists and said, what do you think of this? And they just said, this is a real injury. You know, I can see the real injury here, you know. And what was it? Um, Cliff Barockman, I think he said the most interesting thing. He said, you know, what is, what is a footprint? He said, well, you know, it's, it's not just an impression in the ground. It's a record of the interaction between the foot and the ground and the foot and the subsurface. Every footprint is going to be different because at any given moment you're shifting your weight, the ground is shifting. You know, you're, every footprint is going to be different a little bit. So, I mean, the best so the best evidence are, are footprints and handprints, and I'll include in handprints. I'll include fingerprints mm -hmm. uh, if you go to the Sur website. Uh, there is a uh, picture there of a huge muddy handprint on the side of a truck that include that even has dermal ridges and everything in it. Wow! wow. Um, some of the footprints you can see dermal ridges in there. I mean, that's that's just not fakeable, you know. I mean, I guess theoretically you could, but but when you have a succession of things, you know, footprints, some with dermal ridges, some not, you know, because the ground is, is different with every step. But sure. when you can, when it can tell a story, that's what I'm trying to say. When those footprints can tell a story, that is probably, I mean, the best, but, you know, as, as Cliff Brockman also said, what is the, you know, somebody asked him what the best evidence he had ever seen was. And he said, the similarity of evidence all the way across the world you know, from California to Ohio to Kentucky to China, and where he he was there, and they said, "Oh, you have these in America too," <laughs> um, <laughs> you know, and and you're seeing the same sorts of things all the way across the world. Yeah, um, people who couldn't possibly have any contact with each other. You know, a remote village in China, you know, and the West Coast, or you know, Ohio. A lot of them, I guess, are seen in Ohio, but um, I mean th that you know those things are, are fabulous evidence. The hair samples um, seem to be um, very contentious. People they get hair samples mm -hmm. and they come, you know, and they come back and says, "Well, it was um, we couldn't um, we couldn't talk we we couldn't tell it right. was contaminated. It right. had some human DNA in there." A quick aside. One of the people I go out with a lot, his name is, uh, is Scott Barda, and he's written a book called In the Dark Pine. And uh, he is a lifelong friend of Michael, who started Sir. I mean, they literally grew up on the same block together as kids. And they've had you know all kinds of adventures together. And Scott goes into a good bit of detail in the book about what has happened to the some of the DNA stuff that they've sent off for testing. Ooh. Um, you know, not huge and not technical, but mm -hmm. uh, just kind of what's happened, um, some of the story behind that. And um, 
they've had some really spooky stuff. Again, after reading his book, I almost didn't go out in the woods again. <laughs> like, nah, too much stuff out there. <laughs> Well, you know what? I'm um, gonna I'm gonna have to grab the book because uh, one uh, of the parts of the whole like bulk of evidence that we could possibly get uh, that is my favorite. It is the most intriguing to me. Is that like the the actual physical stuff that they could possibly leave behind, just like a just like an animal would. So mm -hmm. like the scat, the blood, mm -hmm. the hair samples, that kind of stuff, really just like sends me and so yeah so i'll have to get it just for that section but it does sound like a good book anyway and, and as i recall i think michael had a freezer full of scat um which unfortunately there was a power outage and um, oh, no. I, I guess a lot of this was uh, lost so <laughs> I, I'm, I'm sorry i would not want to clean out the freezer <laughs> i'm just sorry <laughs> Yeah, you're a good that friend, be... but you're not that good a friend. <laughs> oh, that um, would be that would be a hired help day. <laughs> yes, um, but uh, yes, that that is that is fascinating stuff. Yeah, well, and they you... always seem to come back contaminated. Uh, right, right. Okay, okay. Because I was going to ask if you if you knew of any other circumstances or just like stories that you have heard where it came back. I mean, maybe inconclusive or just some some kind mm -hmm. of just weird like result, just strange result. I believe some of them have come back inconclusive. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and um, that's a harder one. Well, it's hard, but I don't know as much about that. Wish I could remember. There was one guy at the conference in Hastings, first time I went, who gave a very, very good lecture on the DNA and the DNA as it seems to vary across the country as if, you know, basically uh, charting its movements across the world or something like that. Hmm. Um, and sadly, he gave it right after lunch and it was very technical and everybody was kind of falling asleep. And I, oh, no. I but it, but it was very good, you know, and the guy deserved a lot more credit, I think, than he got. He wasn't flashy, but he was just good, solid scientific evidence mm -hmm. and i guess you, you could probably go back and find the guest list for the uh, would have been the second bigfoot conference in hastings nebraska and uh, and look at the uh, guest list and uh, maybe figure out who that was because they had cliff barockman and uh -huh. um and some others and one of the interesting things just uh, cliff was talking about you know of course he was on finding bigfoot and he talks about the fact that it was the show was kind of sensationalized but that they were serious about what they were doing. Right. And when they found that the producers were kind of manipulating stuff to make it look like this, said they went on strike and they weren't going to do it until they fixed it. Uh, and he said, all these suits came out from New York and everything. And they said, well, we thought this was what you wanted. And they said, no, <laughs> we are serious about this. You know? <laughs> um, so I, my, my respect for them went up hugely when i yeah. heard the story yeah yeah no he's 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 one of the good ones i gotta mm -hmm. say if you ever get a chance if you're ever out at uh, in the pacific northwest uh take a gander at his museum he's got us uh, the north american uh, bigfoot center have you been i've heard i've heard oh, stories okay, of okay. it. i, I oh. would love to see that oh yeah. it's awesome yeah it's such uh it was just really cool really glad we mm -hmm. made it um well okay what do you what is your opinion on um, kind of like interactive evidence such as rock throwing and wood knocking and like gifting? Well, it seems to happen <laughs> a lot. Mm -hmm. um, again, Scott and Michael, you know, tell of, you know, of sitting at a table, like a card table and, um, you know, at their campsite and a rock comes flying over the canyon a couple of hundred feet away big rock and it just mm -hmm. if i remember right it landed right square on the table they i mean if you could sign them up for baseball i think they would just be amazing from what i hear <laughs> you know it, they'll hit you if they want to hit you um there's somebody here i think it was up in just in the foothills here hiking and they um you know something threw a rock at them they threw a rock back <laughs> and this thing comes and then a big one comes whizzing right by their head <laughs> And they decided that little game, um, they, well, they didn't win that little game <laughs> and they just got <laughs> out of there. Um, there's so many stories of um, um, the rock throwing that, I mean, something is throwing rocks or there's a lot of people 
who have no interest in this or knowledge of it, who are lying, you know, some of the other interactions, um, whooping. I don't know that that really, I can't say that it does much. It hasn't in my experience. Other people have had better experiences, but I know like one person used to put on some of the um, Sierra sounds, put them on his car, you know, stereo and play them as loud as he could hoping to attract something. But I'm saying, I don't know if you want to do that. You don't know what you might be asking them to do. You, know? yeah, you, yeah. you might be asking them to perform a very unnatural act or something. <laughs> and, uh, you know, uh, you want to be careful what you're saying. But um, I know um, other people have had them standing outside the tent and something is talking to them. Mm -hmm. um, you know, this is what they call it the samurai chatter because it seems to sound very Japanese. Um, and it's been analyzed by um, uh, Scott Nelson um, and three other people, two other people have looked at it. Uh, but, you know, uh, Scott Nelson was a linguist in the Navy, as I recall, who has said it's language. It is absolutely right. language. And others, you know, Kristen something, I, I could look that up, but. Uh, you know, and she says, this is not manipulated. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, and other people have listened to these recordings of this samurai chatter, of this vocalization, and it seems to be very, very real. And like I said earlier about Moorhead, you know, um, you hear this and it's, it's kind of scary. <laughs> you know? mm -hmm. um, wood knocks, I've heard, and um, I suspect it's just a, a way of letting somebody know who's, you know, where here's, I'm here, where are you? Or I don't know, it could be, uh, I think they probably, if they know that, you know, they're there, like if you get to camp and are put, doing whoops and stuff, mm -hmm. and they you, you see you setting up camera traps and stuff, <laughs> they probably will set up, they probably have a sentinel, would be my guess. Um, hmm. And uh, so, you know, it's like, okay, they're awake, you know? <laughs> Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I mean, who knows what, what they're trying to say? <clears throat> I mean, that's what I say. We know, we know almost nothing about them. We surmise a lot. You know, we know that they seem to smell bad, oftentimes, not always. Uh, they smell really bad. We know that they are big, that they're strong. And for the most part, they seem uh, not only um, neutral, but sometimes even quite benevolent. People have told of you wake up in the morning and finding all their firewood stacked under the tarp. <laughs> uh, either oh, that, that would be maybe, nice. <laughs> yeah, I mean, maybe it's elves or fairies, you know, and not big, but who knows? But, uh, you know, I've heard, you know, stories of them being very benevolent yeah. um, um, and curious. They seem to be very curious. They seem to have a sense of humor. One of the things that Michael has experienced and others uh, is to have them come running through the camp when it's pitch black. And, you know, even bumping into people uh, and they just seem to have a ha have a sense of humor and really like to mess with your head. Mm -hmm. So I, I think I think they could be really fun <laughs> 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 if they didn't tear you apart like the sheep that I mentioned <laughs> earlier. You know? Oof, very well, but very interactive. That's, that's <laughs> interesting. <laughs> well, um, so, Jim, I, I'm just going to ask you one one more question that I had in regards to evidence. Mm -hmm. um, and then uh, we're going to move into our final segment here. But I wanted to ask you this, uh, because you know, you, you, you've you studied the ev evidence for quite a bit longer than I have. And I have been grappling with this concept of like, this non connected evidence, like it's it's more so assumed that it's being caused by Bigfoot, mm -hmm. like, mm -hmm. uh, uh, like, uh, like, like tree structures, or, uh, mm -hmm. you know, breakage, or like, even like the nests. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like, mm -hmm. as fascinating as those are, I do find them very fascinating. Like, you know, have we actually seen them making all of this stuff doing this stuff? Mm -hmm. Like, is it safe to assume that they are doing it? They are the cause? To the best of my knowledge, no one has ever actually seen them doing this. It seems to be, you seem to see it in areas associated with areas where there are reports of people having seen them mm -hmm. or having seen something more substantial like a footprint. You know, you may see a footprint and then in the same area, you may find some tree structures or something like that. Um, and like I said, what I saw a minute, minute ago when I was saying, we really don't know much of anything. 
Yeah. That is all surmising on our part. I believe uh, Dr. Meldrum does not believe that tree structures are relevant. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I, I just heard somebody say that. I have not heard him say that. Uh, but he was out here visiting once and somebody report, you know, mentioned that. Um, yeah, you, you're right. I mean, you're, you're absolutely right. A lot of it is disconnected. Mm -hmm. And we may find someday that they don't exist, you know, that, that there is something else uh, doing this. We don't know what, you know, we don't know what it is. Something is doing something, but it may not be a Bigfoot as we are thinking of it. Who knows? We, we just don't know. I think the, the trick is, is to not be cynical. You know, be skeptical, but not cynical. You know, cynicism is not wisdom. And, you know, cynicism is a reflex, knee-jerk reaction to help you preserve your worldview. It doesn't leave any room for expanding your worldview. Skepticism does. You know, you could ask, why don't we find bodies? That's a very good question. Uh, I have my thoughts about that. But... Um, but to say, we've never found a body, therefore, you know, they don't exist. Right. You know, that, that's a cynical approach. Um, you know, you just say, well, they can't exist because there's no evidence, because you, we've discounted all the evidence. <laughs> because, like I've said, there's, there's historical precedent. The fact that every Native American tribe has a name for it. You know, not even not as an archetype or something, but as a real creature in the forest. You know, the historical precedents. There's uh, thousands and thousands of people who have seen something. It just goes on and on. There's the audio recordings. There's the footprints and handprints. All of this stuff. That's if not technically evidence, it's a clue. And what I've tried to do is, is I'm not trying to prove that this guy exists. I'm saying. My, everything I wrote and I've, I've tried to say is, let's keep an open mind, but it could. You know, I, I don't think we're going to, it's going to be hard to get proof, especially nowadays, you know, because nowadays with artificial intelligence and stuff, it's getting harder and harder to create something or, you know, film something and have people say it's not true, you know, that it's that it's real. I mean, right, right. Um, I don't know. For, I just sort of went off on a tangent there. I forget what your actual question <laughs> was. <laughs> no, no, no. I, I mean, I, I think we, we roundabout got to it. I was, mm -hmm. I was just asking about like the disconnected mm -hmm. yeah. evidence and just like, how do we know they're the cause of it? But you, you answered mm -hmm. that. Yeah. Yeah. Like uh, yeah. that was very good. And then some, <laughs> I, <laughs> I appreciate it. <laughs> hey, as long as I get to talk, that's, that's, that's all that matters. Well, I really, you know, I my just, head Yeah. No, I, I'm glad that you touched upon the uh, skepticism versus cynicism as something I've said on this very show as well. Um, mm -hmm. And yeah, you said it in a in a really good way there. Like skepticism is a way to continue preserving your worldview, and that's just I, that's mm -hmm. true. That's just true. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, be a little bit more open minded than that. Um, all right, yeah. sir. Well, we are near the end. We are at our final segment. I got a couple questions for you, and then we will send people okay. somewhere online and close it out. Uh, so final questions, final thoughts. Uh, first question for you, and I'm so glad you said this. You said a sentinel for Bigfoot. I heard some mm -hmm. crazy information recently and I haven't heard anybody else mention it before. So it kind of just like, you know, came out of nowhere. But are you aware or have you heard of a connection between Bigfoot and owls? Um. I am aware of there being something there. The um, actually, I know more about owls and UFOs. <laughs> I've heard than, that. Than, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, you know, as as the cover. So you know, who's to say they're not one and the same? Um, huh? You know, this is you know what I was getting from you know Jacques Vallée was all of these phenomena may well be different views of different parts of the same thing. I have heard people talk about that, but I don't really have any thoughts to speak of on that. Um, I wish I did because uh, it's a boy that that, that just, just reeks of archetypes and <laughs> it does. mythology and it, stuff, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah, it really does. And that, and, and you know that that's kind of something I spoke to also was that like owl the owl as an archetype in Native American 
uh, his, mm-hmm. you know, their, their story history and, um, and also across the paranormal like world in general, mm-hmm. like it's, it's, mm-hmm. uh, yeah, yeah. It comes up quite a bit, but yeah. was just curious, just curious to yeah. ask yeah. somebody in the field. Um, second question, uh, what would you like to see more of in the Sasquatch field moving forward? Hmm. I would like to see done in a respectful way, but um, coming in and, and bringing science and I will say kindness is not quite the white word, but mm-hmm. um, empathy kind of together, you know, using, you know, parabolic mics and um Flares and you know all these different things, but you'd have to sneak it in there because they're you know they very likely are watching you set this stuff up. <laughs> um, uh, one guy set up. I was reading about. He set this elaborate trap, and everything went away until he took it down, and they all started coming back again. You know, but I would like to see you know bringing in you know basically bringing all the guns to bear. I'd like to see that at least a few times to see what happens. You might scare them off or you might actually get something. But if, let's say they did, let's say they got, uh, you know, flare cameras and everything else, you know, there's absolutely, we see it, take a video of it by the stream, pulling mussels out of the water and eating mussels, everything. And I was like, so then what? If you said, if you tell the world, this thing is really out there, everybody and their cousin is going to be out there pounding it to death and everybody's going to try to shoot one you know what's the i heard i heard a quote one time well shoot it before it hurts somebody well it's been out there for decades you know mm-hmm. but um if it were proven true i don't know that i would really like to see it come out if i were ever able to catch a perfect photograph my thinking is i would uh, have a little thing at my coffee shop one night, bring in all my friends, especially my the the cynical friends, mm-hmm. and say, here, there you go, <laughs> and then hide it away and never show it again. <laughs> um, because I really, I don't know, I just, I, I've developed a real fondness for these things, and I would hate to see their lives destroyed. Mm-hmm. And I even feel kind of guilty sometimes going out there thinking, you know, you know, they're going, oh, God, here's another guy out there, you know. <laughs> God, now we can't, we have to go the long way around to get to the water source because we got these guys here, you know. So, yeah, so I don't, that's that's really what what I'd like to see is really yeah. not a lot of anything except people going out there saying, I am in your backyard. I would love to meet you. And if you would let me meet you, that would be awesome. <laughs> <You know? laughs> yeah, yeah, maybe I don't know. More I more open mindedness. Uh, you, you jogged my my memory on something. Oh, when you were talking about like the, the shooting thing too. what I personally would like to see moving forward in the Sasquatch field uh-huh. is another option to the shoot or not to shoot mm-hmm. dilemma. That's what I'd like to see. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I was uh, this one guy I mentioned who was the Vietnam vet who was, you know, a tough man, you know, mm-hmm. a, 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 an absolute man's man, you know. And like I say, the, the stories he tells, I have so much respect for him. But we were out one time and there was a logging crew and they're out there for weeks at a time. So we stopped and he just goes up and says, how are you guys doing and everything? Did you ever see anything strange around here? And uh, well, like what? I don't know, just something unusual. You mean like the Yeti over there in the river? And uh, and it's like, well, yeah, that's kind of what I was thinking. (laughs) So we talked about it a little bit. He says, well, what was your first thought? And he says, well, I wished I had my gun. I wanted to shoot it. Uh, And he says, you probably don't want to do that. Oftentimes they move in family groups and um, they would hate you for it. (laughs) And they might not ever find the pieces of your body, you know, if you did. Um, And he's going, well, okay. (laughs) Obviously, that's what you were, that's what you were hunting for when you said, have you seen anything strange? Um, I I mentioned earlier that I would would, would come back to um, the Air Force Academy. I mentioned something earlier about the Air Force Academy. Oh, um, I think I did earlier. Did on. you did you want to uh, talk about that for the Patreon just, just, after, or you want to just talk about it now? 
Oh, wait, we can do it for the Patreon. Does that That's sound fine. good? Yeah, yeah. yeah Let's yeah, save it for the Patreon. Little, a little, okay, little, yeah. little something special for, for my patrons. Um, all right. Yes, because I do want to hear that story. I want to hear that. Uh, final question for you today, though. Yes. If you could have been first on the scene at any one discovery in history, which one and why? Ooh. Boy. I have a thing for physicists. I love physicists and physics. <laughs> I would have loved, I think, to to have been around. What's the story of um? Th this is so obscure. This is so nerdy. So just forgive me. Um, what was his name? He was Indian fellow. He was Rafsan Johnny, if I remember the name right. He sent a letter to Einstein. Because basically he had read everything in his library, in his town, all the mathematics book. And he said, you know, dear sir, I think I have found the answer to this one particular problem. And Einstein gets it. And he eh, throws it in the trash. But then he pulls it out and realizes this guy is an absolute genius. And I think it would have been so awesome to be there to to see Einstein <laughs> being taken aback by somebody else's work, you know, <laughs> and to see him you know, go, oh, my gosh, this is, <laughs> or my God. <laughs> um, I, I just, it, like I say, that that's nerdy beyond belief. But I think that would have been a really, really thrilling moment. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> that that was so unexpected. I wasn't expecting that. Thank you. That was no, awesome. I mean, I, you know, I also want to go to Antarctica, but <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, like we what, were saying, so what, time doesn't exist. Nothing yeah. is real. You can. You can. What would what would be your fit one if you would if you had a choice? What would be play one you would like to see? Oh gosh. I would have liked to have been there to see what really happened. Uh, uh, for the Roswell crash, just stand, oh standing on the, yeah. <laughs> standing on the the ranch field and just watching. What did something actually happen? What crashed? I don't know. Oh yeah, and oh yeah. That, just be first on the scene and see that. that that's a that's a real good one. That's a, <laughs> and I just I just finished reading us uh, for the second time. Witness to Roswell. Ooh. Um, and um, he it was just every everybody they could find. There's like 600 basic witnesses mm -hmm. to this whole event. And he interviews a lot of them. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's a good one. I'll tip my hat to you on that. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Um, all right, Mr. Brown, um, here at the end, where oh, would me. you oh, you're good. <laughs> Where would you like to send my listeners to uh, find out more online? If there's anybody you want to shout out, uh, any websites that you can send them to? Well, like I say, I don't have any online presence. I I'm, I'm an old guy and all this stuff just confuses the daylights out of me. <laughs> um, my friend Patrick is just starting up his, uh, but I don't even know a name yet. Um, Patrick McMillan is his name, but I don't know um, how, how it's going to show up on uh, blind, but I, I can get you that information later when I know more about that. Absolutely. I would, I would strongly suggest uh, people look up MK Davis and thinker thunker as far as good quality videos um, where the heat, they're, they're both just getting there and pick them apart, stabilize them, zoom in, do measurements. And those are really, really good sources to just see a whole bunch of things and kind of see some of the thinking that, that smart people use. All right. Yeah. Uh, of course, go to the SIR website too, Sasquatch Investigation of the Rockies. Um, the, um, particularly look for the picture of the handprint. That that's impressive. That's up on that website. On yeah, Square? last time I looked. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah, I'll check that out. All right, Jim. And uh, to close us out, do you have any final thoughts, words of wisdom, or a piece of advice? Sleep with the lights on. <laughs> <laughs> Familiar. <laughs> I can't think of anything right now. Believe it or not, I'm actually almost talked out. So. <laughs> okay. I did it. I did my, it. My, yes. It, it, my mouth is actually starting to hurt. I was actually. <laughs> 
All right. All right. Well, we will let you go here. Uh, thank you so much, Jim, for joining me today. This has been really fun and I appreciate thank you coming you. on. I've had a great time. Yeah. And, and my friends, you, you, you'll get a thumbs up from my friends who actually managed to see me talked out. Um, <laughs> <laughs> that awesome. just, that doesn't happen. So you'll, you'll get a thumbs up for that. Um, so yes, it's been a lot of fun. Thanks for having me. I would like to thank Jim sincerely for joining me on the show. Listeners, check out Sasquatch Investigations of the Rockies and Scott Barda's book, In the Dark Pine, at the links below. And of course, if you haven't yet, take a peek at Jim's written piece, Let's Talk About Bigfoot, the link for which can also be found below. I also would like to take a second to thank Jason Cordova and the Society for Arcane Studies for recommending Jim to be my guest and for all of the excellent work they continue to do. The Paranorm Girl podcast can be found on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok at Paranorm Girl Pod. Yes, I said Twitter, and I meant every word. Give us a follow, would you, if you're in the neighborhood? If you are catching this show on YouTube, like, subscribe, and share. I thank you. And don't forget the second episode of my new collaborative cacophony of the supernaturally absurd Beer, Booze, and Boogeymen will be streaming live March 2nd at 4.30 p.m. Pacific. Submit your strange light story to ghost.beer or give us a holler during the stream. That will be a wrap for us today. More to come next week. Whatever you may be doing, And wherever you may wander, stay safe, keep the nightlight on, and sleep with one eye open.